Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all doing fantastic. Hope you're all having an absolutely incredible day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Optimism. Woo! Optimism's the name of the game because apparently um, no one's afraid anymore. What? That's crazy, right? So if you have or have not been here the last couple of weeks, the, the, the thing was fear, fear 2.0. You had to have a new download for 3.0 because it was going to get scarier because everyone was panicking over ETF outflows and Germany selling and something about, uh, I, don't, I don't know, people were just afraid of, of, of everything. And now, for some reason, we've turned a corner with uh, Ethereum ETFs and money inflows and, and big money and all these other things. Everyone is incredibly optimistic about the future, but like optimistic, optimistic, like almost like, whoa, cool it down, buddy, because what the heck is going on? Oh, also forgot about that as well. The um, all the fears from from Mt. Gox have also like lightly, completely, question markly subsided. So I try my best. I know my best isn't like, you know, worldwide, but I I, I try to like make videos where I'm like, hey, homie, don't be afraid because you're being afraid for absolutely nothing. Like everyone's trying to get you to sell your coins. And then prices go back up and they go, oh, dag nabbit, I, I, sold, I sold some of my coins. So, yeah, even the Mount Gox thing is, is like not even being spoken about anymore because we heard it's going to take months, months for these people to get their coins back. And the people who've already begun to get their coins back, they're, yeah, see, like they're, anywho, so... Uh, the the current numbers, the current numbers floating around are 70 something thousand, 80 something thousand, 100 something thousand, 10,000. Let me explain. Apparently, according to the cup and handles that Bart Simpson was holding when the d chart Shakira or something like that is now on the up and up. And it looks like According to charts and analysts and I guess optimistic people around the world that Bitcoin, if it goes past 70 something, the number I keep seeing is between 72 and 74,000, I guess whatever chart people have, and then Bitcoin looks like it potentially could go to 80 something thousand. And then at that point, 100,000 is basically in the cards or the cards are in Bitcoin or you got to believe in yourself or whatever is actually going on. Uh, descending pattern, so and so and so. The other, oh yeah, the other one uh, for the price prediction was 10,000 and that's for Ether. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot, a lot of news about Ethereum going to 5,000, Ethereum going to 6,000, Ethereum going to 6,500, $7,000 Ether is going to happen within the next couple of months. That seems to be the, the theory, at least right now, as we see more of uh, inflows into Ethereum ETFs around the world and exactly what impact that they're going to have. But the optimism is there because the optimism is back. You don't, don't let anyone fool you because... You thought it was gone, but then it came back, and now here we are once again in the same spot where we were before, even though like nothing scary has happened except for the fact that people keep saying that scary things are happening within the cryptocurrency market. <gasps> and then they don't actually end up happening, and the prices go down, and people end up selling their coins, and then they try to buy them back again when prices go back up. Crazy how that works out, right? Someone else says, I just swatted at the air. I looked crazy. Someone else says, named Arsen, that's a, that's a name, A-R-S-E-N, uh, says that Bitcoin looks like it's going to $330,000 in the current bull cycle. Wee! Remember I told you, so for those of you who weren't here, oh gosh, like a week or two ago, everyone was afraid and we, and we were getting like, 
maybe Bitcoin can possibly go to a hundred thousand dollar kind of news. And then that became a hundred and ten thousand. And then the market began to move back up and that changed a lot of people. Oh gosh, what was the most recent one? It was like a hundred and seventy thousand that people were saying by the end of the year or something like that. I don't really remember. And now people are talking about like I'm I'm getting two hundreds to three hundred thousand dollar. Uh, Bitcoin prices again for this bull cycle. I think everyone has a relatively varied uh, idea of where the market could potentially go. Um, I know a lot of people I've been seeing and hearing from a lot of people I know. These people are not experts. Let me make that abundantly clear. These are everyday average Joes. A lot of people are thinking like $180,000, $190,000 Bitcoin. A lot of people are confident for a $250,000 Bitcoin. I'm seeing, some, I'm seeing some 300s, but I don't see a lot of people going the um, uh, Samson Mao route. Uh, for those of you who missed that, Samson Mao was predicting a, a $600,000 Bitcoin. And then he went to a $750,000 Bitcoin. And I think maybe, you know, rich people, you know, they have crazy parties. So I assume the night before maybe something was going on. But uh, one day this guy predicted, he said this year, he was predicting an 800 to a $1 million Bitcoin. And I was like, Samson, go sit down because this is not, this ain't it. He said, he argues that smart money institutional investors, market experts, and other financial professionals have accumulated BTC during its recent correction cycle, indicating its long-term bullish bias for the top cryptocurrency. He said, that's because this dip is nothing new. Right, we've gone over that before. But once again, I can only do so much. I, you know, I don't have a million views on my videos because I, I, I think once I, I don't think I'm hypey enough. I, I don't think I'm hypey enough for people. People always want big draw or like eight million dollar Bitcoin today, like that that kind of thing. And I, I, I give you what energy I can while trying to uh, bring you the news. It says, for instance, Bitcoin's first bull cycle in 2012 lasted 800 days and saw its price rise by a whopping 9,000%. The next cycles in 2016 and 2020 lasted for around 800 days, and Bitcoin's price surged by approximately 3,000% and 1,000% respectively. And you got the little charts right here. It says, we are here. Whoa, there's an arrow pointing at us. That's, that's crazy. So the expectations are that by the time we get to... Um, August, that we are probably going to be in the 70s plus $80,000 range, and it's basically sky high from here. I, listen, the, the, the most we have to go on is data and charts and all these other kinds of things. So we will probably see a bunch of um, like countdowns and stuff like that as far as like when this 800 days is going to like be a thing. Even this dip right here, people, please stop forgetting. Please stop forgetting. This was 2020. This was, this was, you know, you, you, you remember. Uh, so the idea is that this one might also last for 800 days, which would put us, I think, I believe it comes out to around, I think it's September or October of 2025 when people are expecting like the, Whoop whoop, like kind of like peak to peak, 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 peak. Whole bunch of other stuff being discussed. Upcoming altcoin ETFs apparently are incredibly bullish for the market as well. People are trying to figure out what the next ETFs are going to be. The Solana one continues to make it into the news, even though. Um, mm -hmm. And then there's still rumors of a Litecoin one. We'll see what actually ends up happening. We'll see the success of the Ethereum ones. I realistically, can we just realistically? Give it like two or three months. The institutions have to see how much demand there is for the Ether ETFs. If they're pulling in tens of millions, hundreds of millions, a billion dollars per week, then we're probably going to see other coins get listed as well, at least potentially. 
by the end of this year. Increased global M2 money supply. Yeah, governments are printing monies again. And the idea for those of you who didn't see it is that the the current guesstimations, no one knows the current guesstimates are that by September, the Fed is going to announce that they're going to be lowering interest rates. No one knows if this is true. However, I think the Fed said something recently and they thought, people thought it sounded like they were going to pivot. It sounds like they're going to change the course of policy. They're going to do something with money. The idea basically being if they lower interest rates, markets are going to pump. The economy's not doing well in any way, shape, or form. People keep losing their jobs. They can't pay for their rent. They can't do anything. So therefore, ow. The Fed looks like they're going to have to start lowering interest rates in September. However... We heard since last November that they were going to do it four times this year. So far, we've had zero. It's, they, they said that they look like that they're on track to lowering inflation, and therefore, September seems like the most likely time frame, at least according to the, the, the news. Is. And also, once again, other governments have begun to print money as well. It's being done <laughs> to pay back debt. But the problem is, is the more that you print, the more that you devalue what you had before. And this is also being used as a tactic to actually literally to devalue the local currency to make it more appealing to do trade with. A lot of everyday people don't know this about economics and GDPs. Yeah, you kind of want sometimes to debase your currency because you want to make it more appealing uh, for imports and exports and for people to also do business with your country. It costs a lot less to buy this building to be able to do business. Sure, let's do that. The takeout debt, you want interest rates to be lower. It's all tied completely together, but the system is completely broken. So, you know, they're not going to really be doing a lot. Rising global liquidity, same exact thing with printing more money, trying to have the, you know, the money flowing back into the system. As you might have been seeing recently as well, the stock market hasn't been doing too hot. A lot of people are getting kind of afraid. I mean, it's also to be completely fair. I told you all that before. Nobody wants to listen to me. And at this point, I really don't care. Uh, the, the, the idea of AI, AI this, AI cheeseburgers, and all this other nonsense is just completely out of whack. I told you I have a lot of friends who are in IT, who are into building AI systems and do all these other things. And they've told me explicitly, because we've had conversations before, about the advent of AI and Terminator-like machines walking around and they're like, we are nowhere near where the public thinks that things are going. The way that current AI is working is you literally just take a bunch of data from as many sources as possible and slam it all together. And what ends up happening is, is that the AI, in human terms, basically hallucinates. It hallucinates, it finds an answer based off of all the things that you've given it. But this is why like when people keep making like AI art or AI pictures, it keeps on coming out as different different things because the AI, the computer is basically dreaming over and over and over of different ways to kind of give you the answer that you want. I keep seeing people using chat GPT as if it's like um, some know-all source and most of the time it has no idea what you're talking about. You have to like re-enter and... So AI isn't as far as people think. A lot of the hype for NVIDIA and these other companies has been that they're producing the chips that are going to power this AI revolution. We have at least a decade, a literal decade before we like really get to like good, good, good AI. And maybe around 15 to 20 years from this moment before we have stuff resembling what you see like in the old 80s sci-fi movies even a lot of stuff that you're seeing for like oh gosh what was that thing for three or four weeks ago when they were showing that 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 tesla bot that tesla robot that was walking around the office most people don't know it's a computer you can map out where you want it to walk as you film it so you literally can film multiple times until you get the right shot of the of the robot walking properly and correctly and picking up the cup properly without squeezing it and crushing it. It's so the, the the general public thinks that AI is like this. No, we have a long way to go. All we have is AI that basically like learns by smashing a bunch of, of data together. This is why you're even seeing a lot of like the self-driving cars. They're in like very specific cities who paid off their uh, local Congress people or local 
congressional whatever to actually allow these things on the streets because they still can't tell the difference between like they need more years of anyway the point is uh that's the why the stock market has been falling people have been seeing nvidia falling like question marks over their head and it's like read figure out what you're actually investing into um right also in the news um Wallace. Oh, no, sorry. That says whales. Yes, Bitcoin whales have been buying an immense amount of Bitcoin. I'm not sure if anyone has gotten that um, recently. The really weird part and this. When I say this grinds my gears. You you can't understand my frustration. When Bitcoin's price goes up retail everyday normal people buy when bitcoin's price go no no comma institutions in wales also buy period when bitcoin's price goes down retail investors who have done no uh, reading no research no desire to look into where they're putting their money they stop buying. You know who keeps buying? The whales and the institutions. Upon hearing that BlackRock, Fidelity, all got into the space and they they bought a million freaking Bitcoin. Re retail investors, for some reason, have not entered the market. I'm not upset that they're not back pushing up prices. I'm annoyed because people keep leaving the market and not paying attention to what's happening. Do you understand how frustrating it is for me? As I advocate heavily for you, for your family, for your friends to get into crypto. Do you want to know why? If we're having predictions that Bitcoin is going to double or triple this year in price, I want you to be in the market to make money. This is this is literally life-changing money. If we're having discussions of Bitcoin 4xing, 5xing, going to half a million dollars next year, I want you to be in the market. I want you and your friends and family members to benefit. I'm tired of rich people owning everything. It's exhausting. If we're talking about people are buying up Bitcoin, fragments of Bitcoin, thousands of Bitcoin, tens of thousands of Bitcoin, a million Bitcoin, with the expectations of Bitcoin going to a million dollars in 2029, 2030, 2031, and retail investors constantly leaving the market every time we drop in price or we go sideways, it's infuriating. We are going to. I've been predicting this for a little more than half of a decade. We are going to exist in a world, I believe, according to the current trends, where Bitcoin is going to go over a million dollars per coin. It is only going to benefit the rich and the people who continuously buy. If you bought in at 40,000 and it goes to 70,000, that should be, you know, elation. You made money. It goes down to 58. You've still made money. These people will sell off these coins and they don't buy back in until $68,000. And they keep thinking that they're timing the market, but all you're doing is making yourself look ridiculous. Please understand, like, this is so infuriating. For those of you not looking at the screen, Bitcoin whales rapidly buying. Retail demand is at a three-year low. The people who Bitcoin is made for are made for. It's made for them. They're not buying. Whales are buying such huge amounts of crypto every single day. You know, the news every day is about whale buying. Even when I don't bring you that news, even if the news says that there are ETF outflows, you know, if you look at the news, if you peruse around that same exact day, <sighs> It's just whale buying news, taking Bitcoin off of crypto exchanges, buying as much Bitcoin as they possibly can. 
Data is showing that the number of addresses holding at least a thousand Bitcoin, they're constantly rapidly buying. So any people who could be benefiting, and this will continue, this isn't, I kind of have lost all hope. I'll be completely frank with you. I've kind of lost hope that people who Bitcoin is made for are never going to understand what's going on. We will exist in this loop constantly. And I mean, listen, I'm not pointing a finger, but even some of you out there, you're not getting what's going on. I don't know how you can watch this channel and not have a long-term perspective. I, I, I don't get it. The point of this channel is long-term investing. It's not hype. It's not today. It's not tomorrow. It's five years from now. How rich can you be? How much more money are you going to make? If you've been following this channel since the end of 2016, look at what Bitcoin's price was. Look at what Ether's price was when I started this channel. It was buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold, buy and hold. I'm not going to get into a rant, but this is frustrating. Retail, everyday normal people, the demand is at a three-year low. They're not paying attention because prices aren't pumping. Retail only pays attention when prices pump. That's the problem. They, they, there's no, it's such a crazy mindset. To sit there and go, I'm not going to touch the market because prices are down. That's exactly when you buy. That's when you get into the freaking market is when prices are low. Over and over and over and over and over and over again. Whales are increasingly buying. The amount of institutional demand is sky high. People confuse the idea of there not being a lot of ETF news or ETFs only accumulating $30 million in a day as something negative. You need $30 million to accumulate the entire mind supply of Bitcoin for that day. <sighs> Anywho, yeah, whales are buying a lot. Retail is not. Re retail probably won't enter back in again. Until around seventy-five, seventy-six, seventy-seven thousand dollars, something or other uh, per coin. Uh, discussions of Bitcoin reaching seventy-one thousand dollars in the next couple of day. I, I don't really know, but a lot of it is 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 coming around to being uh, one hundred thousand dollars by December. A lot of the charts, 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 a lot of the charts are talking about a $100,000 Bitcoin uh, by the time we get to December. And a lot of news talking about Bitcoin surpassing its previous all-time high. Where the market's going to go, how high things are going to be, it's more of a, a loop, if you will, from all the optimistic news that we've been getting. Yeah, it's nice to see this optimism floating on back into the market. It's crazy at any point to see pessimism. It's frustrating to scroll through Twitter and to see people who have larger sub counts or whatever people following them. And all they, oh my gosh, all they're doing is lying or trying to put fear into the market or terrifying people. Mount Gox is scary. This thing is scary. Germany selling is scary. This happening is scary. Prices go up a tiny bit and they start posting these things while you were scared. Whales were buying and it's like, you idiot. You were posting to tell people to be afraid. You're the reason they're scared. It's because of you. You did it. It's nuts. It's really insane. These people are emotional monsters. All they're trying to do is get you to click and get you to so-and-so without giving you any actual news of what's going on. Anything that happens, you're supposed to be afraid. Elon Musk sneezes. The price is supposed to go up. Why are you worshiping these people? It doesn't make any sense. It literally doesn't make any sense. Three or four days ago, Elon Musk said, oh gosh, he was on Twitter and people made articles about it. He said some letters. He wrote letters 
about something that was going on in the day. It was three letters and they happened to coincide with a coin that someone made. And that coin went up by 46%. This is the market now? None of, none of you are trying to make generational wealth. None. All of you are just hyper-focused on these crazy, the amount of scams on Solana. It's completely out of control. Like, you gotta stop. The, there, there are articles I keep seeing of, of these websites who are talking about these new, I mean, daily. There's like 30 new coins daily on Solana, and everyone's running to them. The amount of rug pulls. This is, this is how you want to live your life? With this level of stress? Trying to find the next crappy coin to run to when you see institutions are buying up the rarest asset that we have on the planet? You know the US dollar has lost 99% of its value to Bitcoin in 10 years? And you're, you're chasing these coins, constantly getting rug pulled. There's nothing in your brain that tells you, like, let me focus on things that are stable. Let me not have heart palpitations. Let me, I, I've seen so many posts recently on Twitter. So many people are posting, like, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I scroll back and I see their posts and I'm like, all you're doing is making yourself stressed. You're making sure that this is a terrible experience for you in this market. You know which coins to buy and to hold. You know the coins that have some potential longevity. All you're doing for yourself is making sure. And then these people, that they're posting like every three and a half days when you look through their posts. Just got rugged. It's okay. We're going to go for the next one. We're all going to make it. What are you? Who's going to make it? The people who are going to make it who are buying the actual assets. Is this, this is the same? This is the same crap as you getting into the stock market. And being like, I'm only going to buy penny stocks. Because penny stocks, you know, they might go to three pennies. So I might make it all oh, the company collapsed. Well, th there's another one. You see these mega companies. If you, if, you, if, if you ever get a chance, look up blue chip dividend stocks. Or even like, I think they're called dividend kings. Companies that have been around for 60, 70, 80 years. You keep pushing money into these things. A, 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 a generous Three, four, five, six percent dividend rate that you're that you're receiving. That's that's big money. That like you're building something. You're literally building a legacy. You're building wealth. People in this market, the moment prices drop, they leave or they or they or they jump back in because they haven't received any news. They don't want any news. They don't want they don't want a reality of what's been going on. You, you spend six, seven years of your time not getting into Bitcoin, not getting into Ethereum, not looking at what's happening in the market, and now you have none. So you jump back into the market. You see the prices are going back up. What, 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 do I, what do I buy? What do I do? You buy these crappy coins. And then, then, then they rug pull you. You sit there confused. How's everyone else making so much money? What, what is a, a, a $100,000 price prediction for Bitcoin mean for you when you don't have any? Because you haven't been accumulating. What does a $10,000 Ether mean for you when you didn't buy it when it was at a dollar, when it was at $4, when it was at $8, when it fell in 2021? No, no, no. 2020. I think it fell back down to $80. Reality means nothing to you. You're not trying to build wealth. You're not trying to build anything for your family. You're not trying to build a legacy. You are trying to get, you know, hype, 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 hype as much money as possible. I'm warning you. This is a warning. I'm trying to warn you as best I can because this is only going to increase as prices go up. When we get to $120,000 Bitcoin and everyone's rubbing their hands together like Mr. Burns, it's going to get even worse. The amount of scam coins. You're going to keep throwing your hard-earned money into these things and you're going to lose your money. Oh, the crypto market's garbage. You know how many times I've heard that over the years from people who I told years ago, I told them what to get into. These people got into the market, didn't tell me what they were buying. They bought at you. You can't. I can't even say that on here. I can't even tell you. You don't understand. I mean, like literal hot, sunny day garbage. They lost all their money. And then they go, <laughs> crypto market's trash, bro. Yeah, no, 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 I'm not in that anymore. When I found out what they buy, there, there's no intention. 
for them. They, they These people want a brand new car. They want a brand new girlfriend. They want to be on a beach. You're not trying to build wealth. You're not trying to build a legacy. You're trying to live for today and tomorrow. And then the third day, you're like, I don't have anything. I wonder why. I wonder, I wonder freaking why you don't have anything. That's what gets me so angry is that we keep seeing these metrics. Remember, remember two weeks ago, we had the charts. The amount of re, the, the, the amount of short-term holders usually usually categorized as anyone who's had crypto for less than six to three months, they were selling their coins. They were selling their coins off. All of them. That's that's when the market bottomed. When, when, when you saw that dip, that was a day. The news, sentiment, and Glassnode were like, okay, like we've we've bottomed in price. That was it. Because the people panicked and sold. And they wiped, they wiped out their holdings, the, the, the small people who need these coins. What happens? What happens? What happens to the people who have no Bitcoin if Bitcoin goes to 10 million, to 50 million, $100 million per coin over the next 20, 30, 40 years? They have nothing. They don't have any money. Why aren't people trying to build something? It's crazy what's happening. There's no there's no longevity in in the mindset. It's just rich people being like, "Okay, cool. This is what's happening. We got to accumulate, slowly accumulate over the course of years." And then you look at these people's wallets. Remember 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 like a couple of years ago, there was all this news about Bitcoin centralization and these whales have too much ether. Well, no one else is buying it. No one else is buying to hold. No one else cares about the future. It's nuts. And then, and then we're going to have the same thing again. December 2025, prices start going down, trickling down. We're going to have a two-year period, same as every other cycle, where prices have gone down and retail will disappear. We're going to start hearing about this massive amount of Bitcoin that these institutions are holding in 2028, 2029. People, oh, what? What? Prices are back up again. I, I don't have any crypto. I sold it. No, no, I, no, no, I sold everything. It's nuts, dude. It's freaking nuts. But it, it's the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing with other investments as well. People don't think long term. There, 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 there's no long term. It's just today. How much money can I make now? I want to get this brand new shiny thing. In a decade, you have no money to, to, to live off of. You have no investment and you can't retire. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. That's going to do it for this video. Hope you've all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. Do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.